So now we are going to go to uh, hear our our presenter, and I'm really excited about this. I'm going to turn it over to Howard to introduce her. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. Uh, it's really a thrill for Zebu to visit us today and bring you up to date on the Pakistan projects that we've been helping to fund for several years now. We've funded the building of primary schools for three rural villages in this uh, remote area of Pakistan, Swat Valley. Her grandfather was the ruler of that area before it became part of Pakistan. And uh, she currently lives in Princeton, but she's continued the helping the development of the Swat Valley that her grandfather began. Uh, by setting up an agency that's called the SWAT Relief Initiative. And it's only because of her as our contact and uh, her also managing these projects that we've been able to have the, this opportunity for these primary schools. This past year, we've uh, helped to fund the uh, building of an addition to, to uh, uh, one of the primary schools at, at Zari. Sar and uh, Zabu will tell us about that today. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Zabu Jelani. Thank you, Howard, for that introduction. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Um, Howard, Thank you so much for inviting me to speak at your club meeting today. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be amongst members of my favorite Rotary Club. And I'm honored to have the opportunity uh, to update you on the schools that you have been supporting over the past four years. Uh, first, I would like to give you a little background on the Swat Valley and the work we do there. Uh, Swat is a popular tourist destination known for its legendary beauty, its emerald mines, lush green valleys, fruit-laden orchards, rivers, and snow-capped mountains. In 1961, the Queen of England came to Swat as a guest of my grandfather and called it the Switzerland of the East. I consider myself privileged to have grown up in such a beautiful place, known for its Buddhist history and sturdy people who are descended from Alexander the Great. Swath Relief Initiative, or SRI, was formed in 2009 to help the population deal with the catastrophic takeover of Swath by a group of militant Taliban who destroyed 300 girls' schools and prevented women and girls from leaving their homes to attend school and to do their jobs. SRI started out as a relief organization, but has since advanced to working in five sectors, which are education, primary healthcare, vocational training centers, which empower women economically, clean water and environmental projects, and community outreach. We started our education projects in 2013 in a one-room school in a remote mountain village called Isagat, situated at an altitude of 8,400 feet. And we now have 10 schools scattered all over Swath Valley in remote, inac inaccessible areas where there are no opportunities for children to get quality education. We started building these schools due to the efforts of Azadeh Khan, a board member and general secretary of our organization in Swath. I'm sad to inform you that we lost him last year to COVID. He was an amazing philanthropist who I admired immensely as he had the heart 
of Mother Teresa and the mind of Aristotle and the soul of Rumi. He's also mentioned in Malala's book about oh, for all the work that he did to get out of school children into school. So he's pretty well known in the Swarth Valley. We were introduced to the Rotary Club of Arcata in 2014. And since then, I've had the privilege of working with your club, starting with clean water projects and then to building schools. As always, we have upheld our SRI's promise to give 100% of your donations to our programs. It has been an amazing journey, which has cemented our relationship and helped us educate hundreds of children. We started the Gatusar School in 2016 with funding from your club. In 2017, you were kind enough to help us build an addition to the school. In 2018, we built the Zaraisar School with your help. And in 2019, you funded an extension of the Zaraisar School. In 2019, we also finished building the Howard Garden School with your support. And now, uh, now we are in need of funding to build the addition of this school as well. Lack of education was a problem in remote villages like Zaraisar until SRI and the Rotary Club of Arcata built schools in these areas. People living in remote mountainous areas like Zaraisar Gatusar and Khawargare have been neglected for decades by the government of Pakistan. Due to difficulty in accessing these villages, they lack the most basic facilities for achieving quality of life. We are situated, they are situated at altitudes of more than 800 feet, 8,000 feet rather, so it becomes extremely difficult for the children of the area to travel to other places to acquire an education. The schools that we have built are very important educational initiatives as they serve an underprivileged minority called Gujars, whose children, especially girls, never had access to education before our intervention. Gujars are the poorest and most downtrodden community of the Swarth Valley and have suffered through four major disasters, including a Taliban takeover in 2008, army action and refugee crisis in 2009, mega floods in 2010, and a major earthquake in 2011. Gujars are scattered all over Swarth but SRI has concentrated its efforts on the Gujar community located in the northwestern part of the valley, where they have lived as menial laborers for communities, especially the land-owning Yusufzai tribes. Historically, to acquire land, the Gujars have moved to higher altitudes, and since no roads have existed in these remote areas, the government never built schools for them. Some families in this minority community occasionally send a son to travel long distances to get an education, but girls who lead restricted lives with no status in society are never sent to school. When we asked this community how they wanted SRI to help, they unanimously said that they wanted schools for their children so they could escape poverty and the rut of menial labor, which was their only option without education. Because of the remoteness of these areas, no governmental or non-governmental organizations work here, so we have become their only hope. To build school, our schools, SRI had to motivate these villagers to donate land to us. We had to also help these communities bulldoze a path to the area that the school is located in so that the material for the building could be transported to the site. So far, we have built five schools for children in the Gujar mountain villages of Sangrai, Isagat, Gatusar, Zaraisar, and Khawargare. All these villages are located on mountain tops 
overlooking stunning scenes and, and looking at the river down below. The population is scattered and the main source of income comes from herding and limited terraced farming. One of the most vulnerable groups in these villages are women and girls who have suffered for generations as second class citizens under a strict patriarchal society. Because of lack of education, most girls are forcibly married off between the ages of 11 and 15 setting the stage for a life of misery and hardship for the female population. Therefore, it was imperative that we help the female population in order to avoid childhood marriages by giving them access to quality education close to their homes. By helping us build these schools, you have given a major boost to the children of these communities who come from an underprivileged and downtrodden minority who have never had access to education before. Our last project in partnership with the Rotary Club of Arcata was the Zarai School Extension. I will go over some pictures to show you the construction from start to finish. This school was supposed to be ready at the end of April 2020, but due to the COVID crisis and the resulting numerous lockdowns, our project was delayed by almost a year. We finally finished the Zaraisar School extension at the beginning of February 2021. The COVID situation in Swat Valley is very dire at the moment, as we have a 30% positivity rate. Our schools are in lockdown by government degree, and it is not clear when the school will reopen. These lockdowns have certainly affected the education of these children, since remote learning is not an option due to lack of technology, electricity, and non-availability of the internet. I would like to end by telling you the story of a disabled boy called Zareen Khan, who is a student in our Zaraisar school. Zareen Khan is a seven-year-old boy that I met while visiting the village of Zaraisar. As the children ran to gather around me to enroll in the school, Zareen Khan came lagging behind them on his crutches because he had lost his left leg a few years ago when he fell off the roof of his house. Zareen Khan found it very difficult to walk in the rough mountain terrain he lived in, but was nonetheless very eager to enroll in the new SRI school. His parents told us that they were very worried about him going to school, as the other children always taunted him because of his disability. He told, we told Zareen Khan's parents not to worry, as we would take Zareen Khan to a hospital in the capital and treat him for his disability. After we got Zareen Khan in an artificial leg, he was able to walk again and his parents felt comfortable sending him to the school. Zareen Khan was extremely happy and couldn't wait to take admission in the new school and is really proud to be the first person in his family to get an education. I want to thank your club because you have given children like Zareen Khan hope and a chance to get an education so they can have the opportunity to have independence and success in life. Thank you very much. And if anyone has any questions, I will be happy to answer them.
Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm, and I, I want to, um, I'd like to take some questions, but I want to do something and, and, um, and I'm sorry, Howard, if I embarrass you, but I, I want to really say that Howard has been such a leader and advocate for these schools and for this project and for our ongoing relationship um, with Zebu and the schoolwork. And, and Howard, I just think, you know, sometimes you just kind of sit in the back and don't take credit and just get things done. But I, I just feel like it's important to acknowledge your work in this um, and your, your constant um, desire to help these, especially these girls. And, and I, I, just, I just think it needs to be acknowledged. So thank you so much, Howard. So are there questions that anyone would like to ask or comments? Um, I have one, I think, forming. Um, so so the, you talked about the, the young women, the girls, and, and their lack of opportunity. Are you seeing um, with with the schools and with these things, have you seen, have, what do you see? How do you see it change these girls, their lives? What have you seen? Um, what well, can you share about that? It's, I think it's given them um, a little bit of uh, respect in society. I think they, because they have the opportunity to study and they have hopes that, because, you know, we've been talking to them that if you educate both your sons and your girls, they become equal and they can be, the reason why male children are prized is because, you know, they can earn for the family and the women cannot. So we tell them that once you give your child the opportunity to get an education, then even your girls can be, uh, you know, earners in the family. So uh, once they realize that, they realize that you know, girls can also be a source of income because they're very poor people and that's mm -hmm. the priority for them. So I think it's raised respect for them. It's given them, uh, it'll give them opportunities to become teachers. I mean, there are very few professions that are available to women, uh, like, you know, becoming a teacher in a girl's school or, you know, um, just basically sometimes they'll allow their child to become a nurse, but um, it's very rare, but it's basically, you know, teachers, they, they also become doctors, but for someone from such a remote area, it's difficult. But, you know, what we are planning on doing is that once these girls graduate from these schools, we will give them a scholarship to stay in a boarding school in the capital so that they can do their further education. In fact, there are a couple of girls that we have given a scholarship to and brought them to the capital and they're living there and continued their education. Great, that's great to hear, thank you. Anybody else? Questions or comments? Right. Well, we um, really appreciate hearing directly from you about what's been happening and how our, our support has supported you. And in appreciation, we are going to be giving a donation to our local uh, Tri-County Independent Living. They support people with disabilities to live in the community um, and in a way that they wish to live. And, and um, so thank you. And we will make that donation in your in your honor. Thank you, thank you, That's, that'll be great. I think uh, that is something that's a very noble thing to do. Thank you. And I know that um, our, our Rotary, new Rotary year starts uh, July 1st, and I know that our World Community Services Committee will be meeting and plotting their course again, and, and, um, and I know Howard will be there to um, to support and encourage our continued work with you. So um, I feel good about that. And, uh, and I look forward to, to hearing more and seeing what we can do to keep, 
helping the, the students that you you help in the community. Um, you're you're a treasure of, of your country, and um, and it's good. I'm honored to know you. I feel I feel very honored to to know know you just a little bit. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank um, you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So if there is no other um, announcements or or things anybody wants to share, um, you know, I wanted to, I miss my kitty. Um, and there, this is him here with his uh, boa and his red boa. And Terry um, got to go and visit him and, and take care of him a little bit for me. So thank you, Terry. Um, and I'm sure he'll be fine, but I hope you all have a perfect weekend. And I'm using, just so you know, I'm using, um, well, I guess I, I found my bell. Mm -hmm. And later today, I might use it to make something delicious. But, you know, when, when, when you're out traveling, you have to improvise. I brought the gavel, but I was not going to pack the bell. Um, so anyway, have a great weekend, everybody. Whoops, wait, can't hold it. There you go.